Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson three on our series on personal banking and transactions. So in the first video, if you haven't watched that yet, I encourage you to do so. We went over the various types of uh, accounts that can be open and the advantages and disadvantages for them, so on and so forth. Then we looked at um, how to actually um, deposit money and when it comes time to spend money, think about what needs to be done. And it's okay to spend money, just make sure that you spend it wisely. We'll talk more about that when we get to personal budgets and finance. And then uh, in this unit, we're actually going to start tracking money to make sure that, hey, you know where your money's at, right? And we're not talking about budgeting in this one. Budgeting is going to come later, but we're going to talk about tracking. In other words, when you spend the transaction, how do you know that it occurred and how do you remember? Because there's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it, and we'll talk about that. All right. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have a log or a register, okay, available for you to track the money going in and out of your account or your accounts, plural, okay? Um, and the account or log or register, this, the, the register or log, this is where the record keeping takes place, all right? That's how you keep track of money. The worst thing anybody can do is saying, oh, I don't know how much money I have in my account. Let me pull up my bank account record and find out. And they log into their bank and they find out, oh, I have blah, 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 right? Well, if you haven't uh, remembered that you have a transaction that's waiting to be processed, maybe you sent a check in the mail or something like that, okay? Then maybe, you know, looking at your account and going blah, blah, blah might be a lot less than what you're accounting for, right? And it's always good to know where your money's coming from and coming out of, right? Example, what if somebody starts taking money out of your account without your authorization? How are you going to know it if you're not keeping track of it? Okay, so those are the things that are important to do. Now, there's multiple ways to keep track of your account. There's multiple logs you can use. You could use a traditional paper log, okay, which um, on the back of most checkbooks, uh, when you get your checkbook, you actually have a little booklet that you can write down your log with. And it looks very similar to the one I'll present to you today here on the screen. And then uh, you can do what Mr. C does, and I have an app for um, tracking my transactions. The app that I use is called Clear Checkbook. Let me verify the name. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That's my personal banking, financial, there it is. Yes, Clear Checking. And it's a cloud application that, of course, you secure it with your password, so on and so forth. And it'll actually help you keep track of what you're spending your money on. Now, the trick is, is that you want to document it every time you make a transaction. You don't want to put a whole bunch of receipts in your wallet or in your bag or your purse or what have you and then calculate those at the end of the day or at the end of the week all right that's not going to work for you you want to calculate it right then and there and document it right then and there when you spend your money out of the account itself all right so when a transaction occurs the activity must be logged not later when okay in other words mr c you often see him after he makes a transaction i'll pull my phone out and document the transaction as i'm walking the vehicle or before i start the vehicle i'll document that transaction you get the idea right it is best to document at the time it occurs not after again you don't want to stick those receipts in your wallet and then balance that at the end of the day well mr c what if you do that you mean i know somebody who does that and they're perfectly fine well that's fine but what if the receipt's not printed and you forget about it or maybe you forget to do it for a couple days at a time or you pull something out and you lose a receipt. It's just not a good way to do it, all right? You want to document it at the time of transaction. Now, going back to our first lesson, we said that a credit uh, has several different meanings, right? But in the terms of documenting on the log and in accounting, right, credit usually means the right side of an accounting column, okay? Debit means the left side of an accounting column. Let me show you what I mean, all right? So here we have a, um, well, checkbook register, and this might look very similar to the checkbook register that you get in your booklet itself, right? All right, you have a couple different columns here, right? And we'll go over these in just a few minutes. But notice here we have debit, and it has a minus sign, right? That's money going out of the account, like you have a debit card, right? Money goes out of the account with a debit card, right? So the debit column is all nice and neat in a row. And then the credit column, money coming into the account, is all nice and neat in a row, okay? And the reason you do those rows is so that uh, if you're doing the accounting process, accountants can see everything that's added or taken away and everything that's added together. 
Now, the register has gone a step further for consumers, and then we run a running balance. A running balance means the balance after the transaction occurs. Let me repeat that. A running balance is the balance after the transaction occurs. Okay, and um, so that'll help you out. So these are the three main columns, right? You got your debit, your money going out, your credit, your money coming in, okay, or being deposited, right? And then your running or maintained balance after the transaction occurs. All right, so let's look at these columns in a little bit more depth here. Oops, let me see, did I not include that? I have to go back to it. Here we go. Uh, there it is. All right, so. Let's see here. You have here the num field. Now, the num field doesn't mean uh, I don't like spending money and I just spent so much money I'm numb. Yeah, and that's not what it means, right? Num usually means check number, okay? And that's what it originally refers to, okay? So if you write check number 1002, you would write 1002 here because that's the check you wrote it on, right? Or the check you wrote. Remember, we said that the check number is written on the upper right hand side of the column, and you can confirm that with the last several digits of the MICR number, okay? Now, Mr. C likes to take it a step further, and I like to document the transaction type. Did I go to the ATM machine and pull out money? If so, I like to write ATM, okay? Um, did I use my card? Did I use a debit? Did I use a deposit, right? And I'll, you know, I'll put in debit. I'll put in deposit, okay? So that I could additionally see what the type of transaction was. Some people just leave that blank uh, space blank and only write in the check numbers. That is up to you, okay? Now, the date of the transaction, that is the date the transaction occurs, okay? The date the transaction occurs. In other words, when you go to the store and you swiped your card for a debit transaction, you would write that date in there. Additionally, if you write a check to pay a bill and you pay, wrote that bill on a Friday after you got paid, well, that's fine. You would document Friday's date, okay? And I'll show you where it processes here in a few moments. Now, the description of line right here, this means the description of the transaction, okay? Mr. C likes to put the proper name of the person that I spent the money with. In other words, if I wrote a check to Publix, okay, I'm going to write Publix. If I wrote a check to My Town Water Company, I'm going to put My Town Water Company there, right? So that's going to be the payee, the business, the paycheck, etc. It's not going to be the groceries, okay? It's not going to be to water bill. Okay, it's going to be the proper name of the individual. Even if I swipe my debit card, that tells me where I spent that money. Okay, and that's really helpful. Okay, because when it comes time to uh, resolve issues with the bank, having that documentation really helps you out. Okay, if the money is coming into the account and it's your paycheck, put paycheck and tell me who it's from or tell the person who it's from. Okay, that way you know what that transaction was for. All right. Now this C column, the C column, that means has that transaction cleared the bank? Okay. Has it gone through the bank? All right. So in the case of a debit transaction, when you swipe your card, it'll be pretty instantaneous. And you'll see that on your bank statement right away. Okay. Or your electronic banking statement. Okay. However, however, if you write a check and that check is being processed and being sent away, it might take a little bit of time. Okay. So this helps you keep track of what has processed and has not processed. Okay. Then in the debit column, you write the amount that was debited. Okay. Taken out. In the account column, you write the account or the amount that was taken out of the account. And then finally, in the running balance, you keep a maintained balance based off that transaction. In other words, if you have $100 in the account and you deposit $100, right, you put $200 in the running balance. Why? Because $100 plus $100 equals $200. Or, counterpointly, if you have $100 in your account, right, and you debit $50, your balance at that time is going to be $50, all right? All right, let's look at this in action here. All right, so let's say that a person goes to the bank and they open their first transaction or they open their first banking account, right? And the bank requires a $500 deposit to open an account, okay? So what this person did is in their check-in book, right, their checkbook register, they wrote the date they opened the account. In this case, it was the 1st of September of 2015. What was the description? It was their opening balance, okay? Okay. It obviously cleared the bank because the bank, you were there at the bank and they opened it for you and they showed you the receipt. Okay, that's usually what will happen. Okay, you credit the account $500 and then the balance is now $500. All right, 
get the idea there okay now let's take that a step further all right let's say the next day you're so excited that you got your first checking account that you want to go and write a check and you're going shopping and you decide to buy a new phone program and a new phone from boost mobile okay and so you write check 101 on the second to boost mobile right pretty easy now what mr c does is i take it a step further okay this is 100 percent mr c thing you don't have to do this i recommend it okay i put what i purchased new phone and case okay that helps for various business documentation and documentation down the road for your personal use okay um if you went to Publix and you bought groceries just put groceries all right if you went to the busy bee store and pump fuel okay put gas all right, put fuel, put whatever you want there, right? You can put fruit, fruit, kitty pants. As long as you t tell yourself what you purchased, that'll be a big help to you, all right? Now, obviously, the transaction has not cleared the bank because you wrote it on that day, okay? And we're assuming that this is that same day, okay? So it has not cleared the bank, okay? So what you would do is you would write, let's just say they spent 275 even, okay? Pretty easy, 275 even. Then what you do is you take the $500 balance, subtract the debit 275 right and then your running balance then after that transaction clears would be 225 dollars okay yes mr c i realize that 500 dollars will still be in the account because it hasn't cleared yet that's not the point the point is to know the balance when that transaction clears am i clear on that clear all right you get it all right very good all right so let's do one more. Let's say that a few days later, this person gets paid and apparently they're working at McDonald's, right? So they're going to write number deposit. You can put DEP in there if you want to. I just write deposit or something else. I know what money's going in, right? You don't have to in that column because there's no check number, but that's helpful. Okay. Uh, you write the date the transaction occurs. You write who it's from. Okay. McDonald's. Okay. You write what it's for paycheck how much did they put in the account $95 now does that mean they got paid $95 no because remember back in the deposit slip we said that you could take money off of the account and get it back as cash maybe they held back cash we don't know that right what we do know is that $95 was credited into the account itself okay so credit $95 now remember we're running a uh, running balance here so take the 225 from before, right? Less 90 or plus 95, excuse me. So 225 plus 95, and that'll bring us to $320 as our running balance. All right. So what you're going to do for me is I have provided you a sample um, activity sheet, okay? And a sample um, checkbook register. It looks exactly like the one we just saw. And you're going to document four transactions. There's two on this slide and two on the next slide. I am going to be looking for um, the numbers, if there's a number associated with it, right? I'm going to be looking for the date. Okay, you're going to use today's date as the date or as a starting date. Okay, I'm going to be looking for the transaction uh, payee. In other words, who was paid. I'm going to be looking for the amount of money either deposited or credited and the running balance all right so you should be able to fill these out all right and keep in mind keep in mind um, if there's any kind of uh, cash if there's any kind of addition so on and so forth that you want to keep track of all right now notice the second question the bill was fifteen dollars and you decided to leave a two dollar tip okay well assuming if you're documenting in your checkbook you're not paying cash okay Assuming if you're not paying, if it's documented in the checkbook, you're not paying cash, all right? Notice how you're not keeping track of cash with the checkbook register. All right, y'all, 15 minutes. What a short lesson, and uh, I hope that you got something out of this unit. And uh, after watching this unit, I highly encourage you to take a look and check out my next video series on personal finance and budgets. Now that we learned how to spend our money, okay, now let's see if we can track it and what we need to think about our future when it comes to the use of our money because there's a lot of mistakes that are made out there that um, are, I will call it contrary to what marketers and businesses might want you to be comfortable with, right? In other words, there might be a danger 
in that, ooh, go ahead and finance it and just pay for it each month. Is that right? Is that wrong? That's something for you to decide. And we're going to look at the positive side and the negative side of things. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching.